Today I'm going to show how I'm building a radio magnetic field which was inspired by a crop circle. You can see we have 10 S magnets around the outside and one big N magnet in the middle with little spacers. That's called an annulus. There's an empty space between them. When we move one set of magnets, the other set of magnets follows. And this was based on this crop picture from Italy in 28. You can see how much that looks like the thing I've just made. See how similar it is. And what's going to happen is we're going to have argon gas come through these holes between the outer ring of magnets and the inner ring. And when it gets ionized by electric charge, it'll start spinning very fast, like in this picture over here. You know, the argon ions will go to the center, the electrons will stay on the outside. So that's step two. But I just wanted to document step one so everybody could see what we're working with. Yesterday, in preliminary trials, using this angular magnetic field, we got some interesting results, which we will try to extend further today. First, when we just have 10 S magnets around the outside, and no magnets inside, only two electrodes, positive at the center, negative around the outside at 40 kilovolt, we get a nice spinning motion. For ionized argon gas. Here you can see 10 S magnets around the outside and there's just one positive electrode in the middle and you can see the annular space with no magnets inside. The negative electrode is just a copper ring that fits around the positive electrode along the side of the tube. The next thing I'm going to do is to place four magnets of diameter 30 millimeters and 20 millimeters in total length inside near the positive electrode which will run right through the center of them. Because of the high voltage going there we need to insulate everything with perspex and that's what we've done. What we've done now is to add a strong magnetic field around the central positive electrodes using four 30 millimeter magnets. And you can see this tremendous cloud swirling motion. You can see blue argon on the outside. Electrons trying to get in. This is a side view of the same device where permanent magnets at the center are blocking electrons from getting into the positive electrode. You can see a lot of blue lines around the outside. Electrons trying to get in the middle, they're not doing so successfully. Just turn all of the magnets the other way, and you can see the device spinning rapidly in another direction. Blue argon ions are all around the outside. Electrons in the middle. What we have studied here today is clearly related to how extraterrestrials fly through space using their ion drives. This subject has been drawn extensively in crop circles. You don't believe me? I'll just show a few examples. Here's one near Milk Hill in 1999. We have a little picture of a UFO sitting on the ground and a crop circle tells how it will rise up. We see argon ions or some sort of gas ions coming in the bottom, going through a spinning ring, and then getting shot out the top. And here's another one showing details of the spinning ring, which is just what we've been doing here using a radio magnetic field with the magnets at the center. And here's another one, a smiling alien. 
and he shows details of his ion drive, which has a little annulus at the bottom of his spacecraft. And this is the Hall Effect thruster, which is the closest NASA has to this ion drive. You can see wire coils around the outside and an annulus where the argon ions go. The difference is we're not using this thermionic emitter. We're using 40 kV DC power instead, which makes it easier to scale up. So we're clearly on the right track. We'll continue and see what happens.